Hi everyone, Emma here. I have a few things going on today. I went to the mailbox and I finally received my order from the Czech Republic and it is a huge order of cup buttons. I've been dying to get them. I saw some really cool ways to use them for um, buttons for the bracelets and uh, yeah so I'm excited I got all kinds of different colors it's uh, really hard not to open the package <laughs> waiting to do this video but as I was doing this also I was online I placed a massive order on AliExpress and uh, I was just looking at some charms and getting ready to place an order and I was thinking I have all these charms and this is just a few of the ones I have and they are beautiful but I really would like to um, do the patina on them to really make them pop and look a bit antique -y. so um, I have been shopping around for some patina paint and the prices are a little expensive and I feel like like when I buy things I try not to buy the sets because I find you tend to use one more than the other so um, I just try and figure out which one I want to that I, I'll most likely use the most and I feel like it's turquoise so before I go ahead, and of course they don't sell the turquoise separately as far as I could tell. If anybody knows, let me know. So what I'm going to do, the other thing is I know enough about acrylic paint and sealing stuff. I'm wondering if I can do some artistic painting on them and then seal them with some varnish if that would still work. So I'm going to try that today. You know, no big deal, nothing lost. So I'm going to start with this um, really good um, Grumbacher, I think it's called. And this is turquoise green. It definitely looks blue to me. And I'm not going to put much. I'm just going to put a little dab because that's all you need. And then I have some Liquitex Basics. I have some light blue permanent and what I might do is mix this with the green to make a turquoise or I might layer it so we'll see and then I have uh, bright aqua green now I have this brush here, it's a super cheap brush I got at the dollar store, but it's nice and stiff so you can use it to dab stuff. And I also got this, uh, I think it's called a um, something foot, camel foot or something like that. Because I don't know if you can see it's on an angle and, and this is firm too so it's meant for dabbing but this is a little more. This is actually Artist Loft from uh, Michaels. And if you're doing painting, this is actually a good deal. Their prices are really good. The brushes are rubberized, the handles. So they're awesome for hanging on to. I find with my arthritis, my brushes slip a lot. Um, and if there's a specific brush like this one, and it's not on sale, and they do, their, their brushes come on sale a lot. So you can get some good deals. Um, but if it's not, you can use a 30% off coupon and, and get a brush for, you know, maybe... Oh, okay. the name of the brush is right on here. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh, deer foot. <laughs> it's a camel foot. <laughs> oh, boy. I should just stick to painting. <laughs> okay, let me try... Let me try the trees first. So I'm not going to add any water because I want this kind of thick, but I'm going to do like a dry brush. So I try and take off as much of the um, paint as possible and then just kind of rub and 
dab at the same time. This is actually looking really good. <laughs> and you don't have to do it all. You can leave some empty spots. And I'm going to take my paper towel and see if I can rub some of it off before it dries. Okay, so most of that came off. And let me, um, oh wait, there's, there... the way it's shining through, it doesn't look like it's there, but it actually is. But I think I want a little more. And I think I need to um, darken this. But let's try this first. And you can do both sides, but we'll just do the one side for now for this purpose. And always remember to, yeah, see, it's, you, you are getting it in the crevices. I almost think we need like a burnt umber or something to kind of darken this even more. You know what, let me try the aqua and add the two and see how that that's looking amazing. So it looks good painted, but when it, I think it might be this piece is um, hard to, uh, there's not enough crevices for it to stick. I'm just adding a bit of light blue and it might be a better idea to wait till one layer dries and then add the lighter color, but we'll leave that for now. That actually looks really good. Okay, let's try a different one to see if we can do the rubbing part of it. Um, and you know what? I am going to pause and go get some dark brown. I have, I just grabbed the first thing I saw and this is red oxide and it's kind of a, a brownie red. So actually it looks kind of light there. Maybe a, maybe a bit too bright. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm just going to start and Oh, that actually looks cool. Wow. I cannot believe how amazing this looks. I wish you could see how impressive. Look at that. You're getting, the brush is actually wiping off some of the stuff. I'm going to take the ed side of my brush and rub. And it's take, oh my gosh, this looks amazing. <gasps> wow, look at that. So we could leave that one like that. That looks incredible with the brown, but I think it needs maybe a bit of aqua. See how that looks. I won't put too much. Oh, this is <laughs> incredible. Oh. And then take the side of the brush and rub. I think I need a little bit more in the cracks here. Wowzer. So yeah, I think maybe leaving the layers dry a bit. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. So, And the other thing is, what I'm, instead of just using the side of my brush, although this is working pretty good, is maybe taking another brush and using it specifically for that and I will go grab one before that dries. Eek. So hopefully this didn't dry too much although with acrylics if you're having issues and it's drying quickly you can use a retarder to add but you can also add a bit of water to your brush and if it's recent enough it will actually pull it off. And that looks, oh, that looks awesome. So I think it needs a, something more. Let me see if I can shine this up a bit. 
Oh yeah. <gasps> this is what? Look at that. So yeah, it needs some more. So what should we add a bit more of this in the cracks? So yeah, I would definitely do layers of this. And let's see if we can rub some of this off. Because it seems like what I'm doing is just um, mixing the colors together when I go to rub it off. So, so this is really cool too. As much as it's like not shiny, it's actually nice. You can put a bit of shine on the top areas. Look at that. That is incredible. Okay, we need some, maybe some turquoise. to um, add my a bit of blue but I really need for this to dry first so yeah because now you're I, I would like the the brown to be a little more prominent and what I might need is a finer brush Let's see if we can dab some of these I mean, these are pretty small. Oh, there, this is... As they say, that's the ticket! Helps if you can see what you're doing. <laughs> oh, I got a, I have a, uh, a telephone appointment with my family doctor booked, and uh, I gotta remember to add to my list about getting a referral for an eye test. It's been over two years, so. So that's starting to look amazing. So I think I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to add some of this aqua. And so let's go ahead and work on the others. I'm just going to... I'm not going to wet my brush yet because I don't want to mix any water with this. Um, let's try this one. And... So this is Ganesh, the elephant. And, uh, and that one was Ganesh as well. And I'm trying to think, I can't remember what this deity is uh, all about. I used to know them all. My memory really sucks as I get older. Um, oh, decisions, decisions. Let's try this guy, uh, turquoise. So it's cool too as you still have, so I'm rubbing it across, not necessarily dabbing in the crevices and then you can see the black patina. Let me see if I can turn this around to show you. So the original black patina that was in there is coming through which is really cool. So if I was doing a bunch of these I would have a way of hanging on to these like with my tool. So that I don't have this beautiful patina on my fingers. <laughs> okay, so let's rub this one off. 
and uh, so this is it's rubbing it off the top parts but it's not making it shine which is fine if that's what the look you're going for and sometimes that's what I am looking for but let me I, I like some of the shine coming through oh because it makes it you know what these are they're not that shiny to begin with like they're more of an antique silver but once you add the patina it really makes it look amazing look at that <laughs> this is awesome so i think i need a bit of um let me use my my deer foot i was gonna say camel foot but and see if I can just dab some spots rando to add with the aqua to give it a more blue feel and I'm gonna put some more aqua back on There. Ooh, you know what? Maybe the third color, the turquoise. Sweet, this is really looking nice. And then we're going to go and just rub the top points off. Just a quick rub because I don't want to rub too much off. I look like these little waves. And again, if it dries too quick for you, go ahead and put a, like a drop of water on your paper towel and squeeze out as much as you can and then rub and it will lift the dry pieces. So there, oh my gosh, that one's beautiful. So I just did the one side. I will um, let this dry and I might try a different color, maybe some orangey patina on the other side okay let's take a look at oh our tree is still wet um let's try some brown on this antique tree i don't know what that is must have been from the the paint okay and let me add some blue when I add it this time I didn't um, dab it and then some aqua that's starting to look cool and then we'll put a bit of turquoise and I think rather than um, rub on this one because it's very flat is I might just dab it a bit see what that does so I'm going to take a clean section of my paper towel and just dab dab Yeah, so this tree is a little harder to get the same effect because it's very flat. So actually, there. Now I just rubbed a bit and it's you're getting a bit of the copper look. The old antique copper coming through. Yeah, so there's really no place for the uh, paint to stick to because it's so flat. It's getting in between the leaves and stuff. But uh, so I think this one, this charm, might be better suited for something like this, where you color it and just leave it. And I just noticed part of it came off my thumb. I wonder if I just no. It's oh, there we go. 
so there's a bit of silver coming through if you of course you know, use your finger on me see if that'll work <laughs> this is a very special method <laughs> it's called finger painting oh my gosh anyway that's a interesting okay we'll leave those ones ah okay let me try these little lotus flowers um i think i'm gonna go for some aqua and i had some other paint on there so it's really you really don't need this much paint but i'm getting a little heavy-handed here See what happens. Ooh, actually this is working well. So if this does need water. The the paints are getting dry from being um, in my tray. So I just took a little piece of tissue and wet it and you see how that wets the paint and pulls it up. So this, this is a good one. It's kind of hard to tell a bit, but it is actually, um, the paint is sticking to the inside. Now that's a light color. Let me try this brush with a darker turquoise and I am just going to dab it in there and see if I can rub that off. And where's my little probably a q-tip would work with this oh yeah this is beautiful so it's super small so it's kind of hard to see it completely but I think it needs more off here oh I just rubbed it all off oh boy let me add some more here So that's the thing you have to be careful. Let me see if the other brush will do the job here. Okay, I need to these edges there maybe a little sponge piece of sponge would work that's that worked really nice so let me um try the brown paint for with that one um yeah Oh, that's making a muddy color. I don't know. So yeah, when you mix your paints, just remember if you're mixing colors that they will get muddy. So that's the other reason to let it dry. And let me take another piece of tissue. Oh. And these are drying already, like just the light, the heat from the light is um, affecting my paints in my tray here. Oh, this is shining up pretty good. So you can see a bit of the, let me get a little bit shinier over here. There. So this is going to work pretty good. These are, um, most of these colors are uh, flat, um, matte, so they don't have a lot of shine to them. But once I spray these with the 
um, varnish it should really make them shine but you may not want that shine and if not you can use a matte varnish and I would just or some type of epoxy type of um, like the stuff they use for pouring but I mean for I think about ten dollars you can get a can of spray varnish that's artistic grade and um, you might be able to get it cheaper in the States. That's what it, I pay here in Canada. Um, and, uh, oh my gosh, I've had one and I use it to spray large paintings uh, all year. And I've had one that lasted more than a year. So definitely worth it. So that's this one here. Um, and then we have this large ganache. And I left it with the blue finish <laughs> that looks amazing um, I think I'm gonna leave this one blue and might finish the other side but what I um, I'm gonna leave this for now and wash my brushes I'm gonna put them in the water right now and um, yeah I think this is really successful I learned a few things so I'm going to leave this video as is and um, I'm going to do some work on these and come back and show you what I come up with after they've been varnished and I'll attempt the, um, the orangey brown colors uh, for a different style of patina and see how that turns out. So thanks for watching.